Leo, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for December 2018. And before we jump in Leo, I just wanna remind you that the blog is up at stormygrace.com where you can see all the major astrological transits and aspects that are gonna be happening for December 2018. So don't worry about missing a single thing. You can just click in the description box down below. It'll take you right on over there or go to stormygrace.com and you can see, and I also show you how to relate it to your chart. So feel free to head over and check that out. Also, you've still got a few days to use your 45,000 subscriber gift. So that is also in the description box down below, okay? All right, Leo, so this month, December, is what I'm calling our deep breath month. We have had a lot going on in 2018, an extensive retrograde energy, which made all of us feel pretty much on hold, slow developments kind of crawling forward. And ultimately, as we get to December, I think this is one of the easier months we've got kind of in our back pocket. So one of the things I want to be mindful of straight away, coming into um, December, Uranus is retrograde, but he's retrograded back into the sign of Aries. And this lights up the ninth house space for you. So one of the things I think is important to acknowledge and recognize is first of all, look back over the last seven years, where have you advanced in your ninth house area? Where have you looked back to where you've been and see where you are now? Leo, the ninth house area is education, training, certifications, faith and belief systems and structures, teaching, publishing, broadcasting, um, travel. And travel I also put into publishing and broadcasting as well because even if you didn't hop a, a plane and head to India from the United States or something, if you posted a video and someone far away from you got to see it, that's also a form of travel foreign language, international things. What kind of progress or developments have been happening in your life over the last seven years? So look back, see where you were, see how far you've come. Also, what I think this energy is really useful for until we get to March of 2019 is seeing what attitudes, actions, and behaviors you have that are still keeping you from advancing in this area of your life? What do you still need to get out of the way of so that you can take that class, you can do that study to take yourself to the next level? What does that look like for you, okay? So keep that in mind as we're here in December and as you're looking forward so you can slowly start to think outside of your box and your comfort zone and take action to, to move towards something a little bit different, all right? Now, as we jump into this month, straight away at the beginning, right here on the second, we have got Venus, who's not retrograde. She is not retrograde, thank you very much. Uh, she's in the sign of Scorpio, okay? This lights up the fourth house place for you. Now, Venus over here in the fourth house, you wanna beautify your space. You wanna be beautify your home. The fourth house is home, family, real estate, property, your internal security, right? Relationships with women, all of that falls relationships with your parents all fall into this fourth house space but when Venus steps into the fourth house we usually want to make our house pretty it's the holidays depending on where you are maybe you're decorating for it maybe you're just enjoying the twinkle of the lights or whatever's going on for you but you could certainly want to bring some harmony to this area of your house Venus is also about food and money <laughs> so maybe somebody's bringing you lots of holiday cards filled with money and you're using it to buy food I don't know you can translate that any way that you want to but there's there's certainly this energy of joy and social in the fourth house space. It could be good too if you had a project you were working on and you needed to finish it, you could have money that's available to go to that project, okay? Now on the sixth, we've got Mercury coming direct, so out of retrograde, and it's also gonna be here in the sign of Scorpio. So the fourth house area, you have space now with Mercury direct to make some decisions on what to do going forward, to communicate, it's a very social energy. I do wanna remind you that while Mercury is direct here on the sixth, he needs time to stretch, have his cosmic latte or matcha or whatever he has, before he really resumes his orbit. So just because he's direct doesn't mean go out and make that super big purchase you've been waiting for just because Mercury is direct. Pay attention energetically, trust your gut, trust your energy as well. Does it feel like the right time to make the decisions that maybe you need to make here in the fourth house? But I really genuinely love how social this energy is um, at the beginning of December. 
Now on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in Sagittarius. This brings a little bit of twinkle to your fifth house. Again, a joyful social house, a social energy. And the new moon is where we plant our seeds of intention. The sun and the moon are together, so possibilities are endless. This is a new start for you. On the 12th, we have Mercury also stepping into Sagittarius, so lots of fifth house energy going on here because Mercury is also going to light up the fifth house. So here you are making decisions about the fourth house. You get a new moon and you get beginnings in the fifth house, the joy house, the beginning something new house, and you have Mercury direct and online to help you make decisions about what to do going forward. This could be decisions about a romance. This could be decisions about a new business, a new project, a new hobby, things with your children, things surrounding children. But there's a lot of self-expression and pleasure that is available in this particular energy. And in the sign of Sagittarius, you're going to want to be very optimistic and be very expansive with the energy. So you're probably trying to get something out there or bring something joyful to you, likely, okay? On the 22nd, we've got a full moon happening in Cancer, and this is going to bring ending, acknowledgement, or adjustment to your 12th house space. Now, a full moon in the 12th house, because we need an adjustment here, what I think of is one of the things that... Um, happens in the 12th house is the things that we've had kind of brewing beneath the surface, right? Even if it doesn't mean that you're angry or you're feeling totally out of control, if you've just had some things over the last little bit that have been brewing down there beneath the surface, it'll be time for them to be addressed, right? So you'll have the next four weeks to look at what's kind of been lurking and murking down there for sure. If there's something that's had you feeling overwhelmed or you've had a question that you felt like you just couldn't get answers to, these will be things where maybe you feel an increased need to spend some time alone so that you can get those answers and sort things out. Also, because this is opposite the sixth house and we've got the sun moving into Capricorn, which lights up your sixth house, this could be... Um, this could be a time where a health matter, some kind of health or mental health matter, comes to light. And I think that this is, again, handled in a little bit more of a quieter space. You know, you're having to assess what's going on here so that you can make adjustments. Now, it's an excellent time with that full moon to do just that. Get in touch with what's down there. Now, because it is, again, in, in touch with that sixth house energy or just opposite it, I also feel like maybe there's a project or something you've been working on that's coming to culmination, it's coming to an ending in some way, shape, or form, and that's totally okay. It's time for it to end so that you can move to the next thing, okay? Now, I just want to focus for a quick second on that sun being in Capricorn. Because the sun is there, the sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality, and it says, I want to be seen here, I want to be known here. Look, 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 right? <laughs> so the sun in your sixth house, this does have to do with work, but it also has to do with daily routines, it has to do with mental wellness, right? Physical wellness, maybe a new health regime. Maybe it's the end of the year and it's just out of the, out of the bag, right? Like you're like, no, I'm about to have Cheetos and Twizzlers and some marzipan. That's, that's what's happening right now. You can tell I'm such a Taurus. Or maybe you're changing that all the way around because you've had enough of that. So you could definitely have a shift in your daily routine here, but whatever it is, you're wanting to be seen. So there's a lot of energy being put into this particular area of your life. So I love this month for you. I think it's a month where you really get to come down off the wall, see what's what, see what you're working with. And then as we get ready to move into 2019, you're coming through with a little bit more of a clear picture of some things that have been going on for sure, okay? All right, Leo, I think it's going to be a beautiful month. Please keep me posted on the happenings that are happening for you in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.